So good to see you. Welcome to Crimson News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti. And Seahawk fans, listen up. We do begin with breaking news from the Seattle Seahawks. The team appears to have made its choice for who will be taking over for Pete Carroll. ESPN and the NFL Network reporting the team is set to hire Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald. He was in Seattle today for a second interview with the Seahawks. This has been a three week long process to find Carroll's replacement. The Seahawks also talked with former Seahawks defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, Detroit offensive coordinator Ben Johnson and Giants offensive coordinator Mike Kafka. So the Seahawks will go from having, by the way, the oldest head coach in the NFL, 72-year-old Carroll, to the very youngest in the NFL right now, 36-year-old McDonald. The Hawks are hoping he can reinvigorate its defense. So far, the Seahawks have not made a comment, but we're certainly tracking that. And this is just coming into the Crimson Newsroom. WSU women's basketball player Charlize Ledgerwalker is now out for the rest of the season. Today, it was announced that she tore her ACL during a game against UCLA and will indeed need reconstructive surgery. WSU has some tough Pac-12 games coming up where they will be facing number three Colorado and number 16 Utah next week. Head coach says Charlize will be remembered as the greatest impact player in WSU women's basketball history. And we do have all the details and the very latest story that's going on right now. You can visit our website at crem.com. The investigation is underway after a deadly shooting happened on North Spokane, in North Spokane rather, at a house on North Kalispell Street and West Lyons Avenue, again in Spokane. Crem 2's Brandon T. Jones went to the scene to get the very latest, and he joins us with a look at the investigation. Well, yeah, hours after that deadly shooting, neighbors here in this North Spokane neighborhood woke up to that investigation continuing several hours after the initial call came in to the Spokane County Sheriff's Office. We were out here throughout the entire morning and what we know is that this whole incident started after some type of conflict between neighbors. We're, we're told that a man was threatening someone with what was believed to be a baton and that that same suspect made threats the night before as well. According to the Sheriff's Office, several hours went by of working to de-escalate the situation before proceeding to enter a home where this man was located. That's when they say the suspect became aggressive towards law enforcement and shortly after a deputy reported shots were fired. The suspect was pronounced dead at the scene and the Spokane Independent Investigative Response Team is now conducting the investigation. So we were inside the house and we heard a bunch of shots and uh, that's when I came outside to uh, see what was going on. A law enforcement dog and deputy were injured during the shooting last night. The dog was sent to a veterinarian for medical treatment. The deputy received minor injuries and did not go to a hospital. Again, we do expect to learn more information about this incident, probably at a later time. But once we get any new information, we'll keep you updated across all of our platforms. And for now, reporting in Spokane County, Brandon T. Jones, Crim2 News. It is coming up at four minutes past noon right now, and we have had very strange weather over the past several days. So we have Thomas standing by in the Creme 2 Outdoor Weather Center with a look at what we can expect. And Thomas, it seems to change minute by minute. Right now we're sitting in the low 40s throughout Spokane. Yeah, but yet the strangest part, Laura, might be that the sun just came out. You might see it illuminating the top of my head here. The sun is finding a little bit of blue sky to play with for today. And yes, even though we're in the low 40s, we're warmer than we were at any point in the day yesterday. It is minute by minute, isn't it? But this time around, we're tracking a lot more rain as opposed to fog for this Wednesday. This is all part of our next storm system that is approaching slowly towards the Pacific Northwest Coast. And it's got a lot of rain over central Washington. So Moses Lake through Grand Coulee and yes, OMAC a bit in the radar blind spot here, all getting rain at the current hour and it has been raining for the past several hours. Let's widen things out and show you just how massive this storm is. Look at the scale of this low pressure center compared to the entire Pacific Northwest. So there's a lot of moisture being fed up from the Pacific Ocean through an atmospheric river into Northern California, Oregon, and yes, into portions of Washington, especially central Washington for now. But yeah, sun is coming out just a little bit. It is helping our temperatures 43 right now in Spokane, 50 in Pullman and 48 in Ritzville. But today is going to be our remaining warmest day of this week as we're tracking just how widespread our rest of our rain chances are going to be for the rest of this week. 
Thomas, thank you. Continuing coverage now, Boeing CEO says the company caused a near disaster over the skies of Portland earlier this month. He addressed the crisis while discussing the company's fourth quarter earnings report from last year. So, should be noted that those earnings were not impacted by the door plug blowout on a 737 MAX 9 jet because the earnings were from before the incident. However, it was top of mind, as you might imagine, during the call with investors. CEO Dave Calhoun apologized for the incident this morning. And while the NTSB investigation is ongoing, he says Boeing bears full responsibility. Whatever conclusions are reached, Boeing is accountable for what happened. Whatever the specific cause of the accident might turn out to be, an event like this simply must not happen on an airplane that leaves one of our factories. We simply must be better. As for the numbers, they showed Boeing was narrowing its losses before all of this. The company reported just over $22 billion in revenue last quarter, 10% higher, by the way, than last year and above expectations. Boeing posted a net loss of $30 million, down from $663 million a year earlier. However, Calhoun said the company is not issuing any financial guidance for 2024 and said they will, quote, quote go slow to go fast. I know that these moments that impact delivery schedules can frustrate our customers and our investors, but quality and safety must come above all else. Boeing will not increase production of the 737 MAX jets at its Renton facility until the FAA is satisfied with the production quality. The company's stock lost 20% of its value this month in the crisis, but the price was up more than 5% this morning after that earnings call. More than 100 people who work at the Spokane Airport are losing their jobs this spring. The current food and retail contract with HMS host ends at March 31st, and the company does not want to sign a new one. Spokane International is looking for another company to come in and run the restaurants and shops. That leaves 119 people without a job if they're working with the current company now. An airport spokesperson said the airport should be deciding on a new company to run the concession sometime in February. Now the workers union tried asking the airport to make the new company hire all the current employees. However, the airport said they won't force the new company to do that. It's maybe a little bit of hyperbole to say that the uh, bartenders at the, at the airport are ambassadors for our city, but we, we kind of are. In a lot of situations, we are the first and the last people uh, that visitors to Spokane talk to. And I just really hope that we can all keep doing it. Current HMS workers at the airport will officially lose their HMS jobs on April 13th.